Winter is coming. Does it make you feel like you need to lower your thermostat and sit around the house like this? We all saw electric costs double over the past 12 months, and now it's time for a long, cold winter. So the government is telling us to prepare for a 22% rise in the cost of natural gas. Those of you that use propane, I know I've heard from some of you that your costs have approximately doubled already. And in New York City, they're saying prepare for 32% increase, which I thought was interesting. Right. So if you're in NYC area, then you're looking for an increase in your uh, bills over the winter. Uh, each monthly bill to be about $100 more mm. per month, um, a raise to over $400 a month on average for those uh, cost of utilities. So the question is, how do we respond by lowering our thermostat, which is what most of us are going to do right, but not feel like we need to sit around in our coat and our hat <laughs> and freeze, but how to stay warm and comfortable. So that's what this video is all about. We're gonna give you lots of great ideas and strategies. Uh, but first, in case you don't know us. I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. All right, let's get right into the topic at hand. Now, most of these tips, we tried to center them around like how to keep your body warm, like when you're sitting around in a room and doing things around the house, rather than how to prepare your house itself for the lowering of that thermostat and prepare your house to save some money on your utility bills over the winter. So this is just really about things you can do to keep yourself warm and comfortable. Well, the first tip, this isn't going to be new to a lot of you, and it makes a lot of sense, and that is to dress in layers. Now, I have three layers on. I have an undershirt, a long sleeve shirt, and a fleece sweater on, and fleece is very warm. Also, uh, the other material that's really, really warm is wool. Mm -hmm. And we always like to put something underneath of the wool sweater that is like cotton to keep that wool from scratching your skin so much. Uh, but it also will insulate you very well and keep you warm. The next thing you can do is wear some long underwear. Just get in the habit of each day putting some long underwear on. Yeah, all winter long, I wear long underwear. And it's so much nicer, especially when you go outside, mm -hmm. you're not feeling that biting cold. Now, the other thing you can do is just go ahead and dig out your robe and wear your robe around the house. For some weird reason, our kids love mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah, they do. They, they like to wear their robe around the house, and it will actually give you that extra layer and help to keep you warm. This next one I did last night, and that's wrap up in a blanket. And I have a really nice, warm blanket that I wrap up in. Makes all the difference. You don't have to supply any other type of heat. That keeps your body warm. Now, speaking of blankets, we actually asked a question in the community tab last week about electric blankets, whether you like them, whether you use them, whether you don't. And we got lots and lots of feedback from you all. So make sure you stick with us because a little later in the video, we're going to take <laughs> on the debate of the electric blanket. Do any of you have a Snuggie or do you know what I'm talking about? So a Snuggie is like a blanket jacket for lack of a better word. It's got sleeves that you put your arms into and then it's free flowing from there on down and it's more like a blanket. Our son Daniel has one with a Star Trek theme that he loves to wear <laughs> around the house. Another item that makes really good sense is to wear a hat. Uh, a lot of uh, off-grid people will do this mm -hmm. when they're sleeping, or if you're camping, you wear a hat. A great deal of heat is lost out the top of your head, so a hat will keep that in check. So if you wear like a knitted cap or a nightcap to bed, it's going to help you to keep your noggin warmer at night. Take a hot bath. Now, you take a really, really warm bath, but we don't actually recommend that you wash your hair while you're taking that bath because then your head's going to be wet and your, as your hair is drying, that evaporation is going to make your head colder. So just you want to get your extremities warmer. You take a hot bath and that's going to help your body to warm up. You can also use a hot water bottle or a heating pad yeah. to stay warm. Now, a heating pad generally doesn't use a lot of electricity, so they're very efficient and they will warm up kind of a, a, a small portion of your body. Uh, so I hope is demonstrating one right here. 
So these newer heating pads, I remember heating pads from when I was a kid. They were like stiff, they were really heavy. These are nice and flexible and they actually have several different uh, heat settings that you can put them on. Uh, now the whole idea with a heating pad is the same idea as the hot water bottle. You're going to turn this heating pad on and you're actually going to go ahead and place it into the bed before you get in, probably 20, 30 minutes. This is like before you go to bed at night. And that's going to heat that area like specifically where your feet would lay. Because mm -hmm. if your feet are warm, then the rest of you is gonna be warm and you're gonna be able to go to sleep. So that specifically is how we would suggest using a heating pad. Tell us in the comment section, do you use a heating pad to preheat your bed at night in winter to keep yourself nice and toasty warm? We'd love to know how you use one. Another item you can use if you don't have a heating pad is a rice bag. Now, this is somewhat the modern equivalent of a, of a wat hot water bottle. So this is just fleece that has been sewn into a small square and it's filled with rice. You can put this in your microwave for about two and a half minutes. It'll get nice and toasty warm. You can do a couple of them, put them right down by your feet when you get into bed and it's going to help keep your feet warm. Uh, some people make them filled with small beans or uh, maybe even fill them with corn. I, a friend made us one that was filled with corn. So rice, beans, or corn to fill these, and then that will help you keep warm. This is something I purchased for Hope a couple of years ago, because she does have cold feet. So I purchased some electric socks and gave these to her for Christmas. Those have nickel cadmium batteries. They'll charge for about four hours. There's three different temperature settings mm -hmm. and they'll stay running for about six hours on the low setting. These are often sold like in a camping or maybe even an outdoors, like a hunting type section. So if you're looking for them like in an outdoor sportsman type place, that's where you're gonna find uh, electric heated socks. You can also find those on Amazon. They have all kinds of them on there. That's where I bought hopes from. Use a fan. We don't often think of a fan as being something we're gonna use in cold weather. But you have to remember that as far as heat is concerned, heat rises, it goes towards your ceiling. And if you have a fan that's gonna be able to direct that warm air down toward where you're sitting, you're going to stay warmer. You can do it with a standard fan, like one of those fans that's on a pole and put it up nice and high and then point it toward the uh, floor so that it's pulling that air down. You can also use your ceiling fan. Just mm -hmm. make sure that you reverse the blades. In summer, they go counterclockwise, and in winter, you want those fan blades to go clockwise in the opposite direction if you have them moving in the summertime. And I would suggest running those on a lower speed, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so you're not creating a lot of wind, you're just creating a, a draft to keep the air, the hot air, to bring it down so that you have access to that. The next one we really like, and that is, if you're cold, you warm up by drinking some hot liquids. <laughs> You know, something that it's, it's kind of obvious, you don't think about mm -hmm. too much, is when you're moving around, you're creating some heat. Mm -hmm. So now the winter time is a good time to be active. Do things in your house, do some projects, clean out a room. Uh, when you're moving, you're creating some heat for yourself. It's a lot better for you. The next few tips will help you specifically when you're getting ready to head to bed. Use flannel sheets. These are much warmer than mm -hmm. your typical sheets. And you can always look around, say, after uh, the holidays, like after Christmas. A lot of times these flannel sheets have like, I don't know, snowmen or Santa or something that is Christmas related okay. on the flannel sheets. And those will be clearance heavily after Christmas is over. So look for them on clearance um, probably a week, 10 days after Christmas, and you might score a fantastic deal on clearance priced flannel sheets. Add more blankets to your bed. In fact, our son just found yes. the neatest, it's a fleece. What all is it made of? Hope it's okay, so two it's microfiber on one side, it's fleece on the other. This is made by UGG. Okay, so UGG is, is really famous actually for their boots. But they also, apparently, which I did not know, make comforter sets. And uh, we went to a garage sale and found this. A lady said that it had barely, I mean, barely been on her son's bed. And she had $40 on it. I thought, hmm, I wonder if she'd take 20. It was the second day of the sale. It was almost noon. I thought, I'm just going to try it. The worst she can say is no. 20 bucks for a almost brand new UGG comfortable. And that's U-G-G. -G. That's what UGG is. And that is a Sherpa and Micro Fleece 
blanket. It is. In fact, she said her son was so warm-blooded, he was getting too hot with that. That's why they were selling this one. Daniel used it last night. He said it was really warm. He was yeah. super excited. He, yeah, he's not real warm-blooded, so that's good. All right, the next thing that you might want to do is use a weighted blanket. Are any of y'all into the weighted blankets? I seriously am. Larry does not like them mm -mm -mm -mm. at all. So for those of you unfamiliar, a weighted blanket is divided into smaller squares, almost like it's quilted. And each one of those smaller areas is filled with either glass or plastic beads. Now glass will actually work as an insulator. All those little beads will work as an insulator and will help keep you warmer. And it also evens out the distribution of weight over your whole body. And I happen to really, really like a good weighted blanket. But yeah. they're heavy. They are When they say weighted, they mean weighted. And that's what I don't like about it. It's so heavy, it restricts your movement. It's hard to even get it positioned in bed. It's so heavy. But it's keeping our oldest sons very warm in their apartment, and Hope loves it. Now, here's something that Larry actually likes to do that I don't like to do, and that is that he will sit around in a sleeping bag. He'll just slip the sleeping bag over him and sit in the family room and uses the sleeping bag to keep warm, uh, and he likes to sleep in the sleeping bag. And I really seriously don't like that. And and just for another tip, I happen to see this on another YouTube channel. Oh. There's one person that takes a sleeping bag and he puts one of those uh, heating pads in it and he warms it up to about 80 degrees and then gets in, shuts the heating pad off, takes it out and sleeps and he's warm all night. Once you start out warm, you tend to sustain a warm temperature. And speaking of preheating things, a heating blanket. All right. We put this in the community tab and we asked you all, what do you think about heating blankets? Now we actually bought some. So to be perfectly clear, we had purchased some last yeah, we, week from we, Walmart. We bought three from, yeah. from Walmart, uh, brought them home. We weren't too impressed. Uh, they, they weren't very mm -hmm. expensive, but they were real lightweight. You want a heavyweight blanket that'll hold the insulation better. And you want a soft blanket that's more comfortable. Those are warmer. These were kind of light and flimsy. And w w while I was sitting on one and plugging it in, it dead shorted. So I took all three of them back and I said, I don't think we're going to go with the electric blanket option this winter. <laughs> okay, so some of you um, had very firm opinions on electric blankets, said you use them. Yours have lasted you for years and you love your electric blanket. A lot of you said the key is to have dual controls so that half of the blanket can be one temperature and half the other temperature and both people are super happy and super warm. And then others had misgivings about electric blankets and uh, said that they had not found any that worked more than a year or so, and then they went bad, which has been our experience recently. Yeah. So we've yeah. been a little frustrated, and thanks for all the great advice in the community tab about electric blankets, yay or nay. But several of our viewers said, just to save some money, get an electric throw blanket and use that instead of spending the extra dough to get a full or a queen-sized electric blanket. Yeah, you can get a throw blanket for around $25 mm -hmm. or even less. And uh, I don't know what the better brands are today. I've, I'm kind of out of the loop, but if you guys know good brands, you know, the, the people that have had yours for eight or nine years, the yeah. thing about that. What are those? Well, the thing of, about that is I think they were made a little better. I think so too. My, my parents had one for, mm -hmm. I think, 10 years, and they were just better made back in those days. And interestingly, so Prep Hound uh, responded on the community tab and said, consider getting a rechargeable or battery operated electric blanket just in case you get a grid down situation, which I actually think was a pretty good idea. But a lot of you said, forget the electric blanket completely. Get yourself an electric mattress pad. I mean, countless people said that in the community tab. So apparently y'all like the mattress pad, which goes over the mattress instead of over the top of you and actually warms the mattress itself, which kind of makes sense. Because hot air rises. Yeah, so yeah. that would make sense that it would give you better warmth. I want to get back to the electric blanket and touch on one more issue. Prep Hound mentioned to get a battery operated one. They do make 12 volt uh, oh. throw 
throw blankets and truckers use them. And uh, so you can get one of those and you can plug those into either a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt power supply. Or if you have one of those power stations, you can plug it into one of those. They don't really use a lot of power. They'll run quite a long time. You want to get the kind that though that don't shut off in a half an hour. Some of them will actually yeah, just, yeah. they'll automatically shut off oh. in a half an hour. You want to make sure it doesn't have that feature that you can run it for maybe a couple of hours. Now, one of the most common ways, one of the first things literally that people think about when they think about, I'm gonna lower my thermostat and I'm gonna keep the room warm and I'm gonna do it by using a space heater. All right, listen up. We have space heater advice for you. And I did some math for you and I made some charts for you to help you figure out whether a space heater is actually going to help you to save money or not save money. Well, as with all things, you wanna take some precautions with space heaters. A space heater should be three feet mm -hmm. from anything else in your room. That way it's not gonna be super heating something in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanna make sure that you're in the room and attending mm -hmm. that space heater just in case something should unexpectedly happen. A lot of fires start from space heaters this time of the year. And you wanna make sure never leave a space heater on while you're sleeping. Now, speaking of safety precautions, you wanna make sure that you are investing in a newer space heater. The reason for that is that the newer space heaters comes with a safety feature that if you accidentally knock that heater over will automatically shut off. And that's super yeah. important when you're looking at something that has a really high heating element on it. But the question that you all wanna know from us and have asked us is, am I actually gonna save any money by using a space heater? Let's take a look. Before you can figure out if you're even gonna save any money by using a space heater, you have to know what your average utility bill is. So you wanna know your average utility bill, go into your utility company website, you should be able to access your own information, and then average, we used four months. We figure in mm -hmm. Illinois, it's a good four months of winter. And we average those four bills to find out what we paid last year. Once again, remember, you're looking at between a 22 and a 32% increase mm -hmm. in the cost of natural gas this year. We chose to kind of hit somewhere in the middle and we added 20% to that average. The next thing you need to look at is how much lower can you set your thermostat? Each degree makes a big change. For each degree that you lower your thermostat, you will save between one and 3% on your final utility bill for that month. We've done this repeatedly and we've tracked it. And for us, it's come in somewhere around 2%. So how much in dollars do you actually save by lowering that thermostat? Cha ching Let's look at three different sample bill sizes and you'll be able to see real readily. For uh, for this chart, we used two and a half percent because it made for really easy math. <laughs> so for each degree, we're figuring you're gonna save two and a half percent on your final bill. So if your average monthly bill is $250 mm -hmm. and you lower your thermostat by two degrees, you're gonna save an average of 5% or $12.50. Now, if you lower that thermostat by four degrees, you'll save an average of 10%, which is $25. And six degrees is gonna save you 15%, which is $37.50. Now, the one thing you'll notice on this chart is the higher that you start out with your bill. So if your average bill is higher, you're gonna save more money. So let's say your average bill is $500 a month and you lower your thermostat by four degrees, you're actually gonna save $50. As opposed to the person with the $250 average bill, which is also gonna save 10%, but that's $25. So the higher your bill, the better your savings. Now, what does it cost to run a space heater? Now, we figured it on this space heater right here. And this one, happens to run at about 1500 watts. We're gonna go through four steps that'll help you figure out exactly what that is costing you. So step one is you wanna know watts times 
time. So in this case, it's using 1500 watts. We're going to use four hours. So you just multiply that 1500 times four is 6,000 watts. Now in step two, we're going to figure out the kilowatts used. So you get the total amount of watts, which in this case was 6,000. We're going to divide that by a thousand. Remember, kilowatt means 1,000. That's what kilo means. So you divide it by 1,000. 6,000 divided by 1,000 is 6 kilowatts. And the reason why you want to know the kilowatts is because that's what you're charged on your electrical bill. They charge it in kilowatt hours. So step three is kilowatts times the rate. That's the rate that your utility company is charging you. And they're all different. So you'll have to look that up on your bill or contact your utility company through their website to find out what they're charging you per kilowatt hour. Now the average rate per kilowatt hour right now in the United States across the board is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. How are those of you who live in Alaska, Hawaii, or California, mm -hmm. your cost per kilowatt hour is substantially higher than 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So you need to know exactly what your energy company is charging you. And remember, for energy companies, there's a summer rate and a winter rate. So when you look up that rate, make sure that what you're looking at is the winter rate and not the summer rate. So in step three, you multiply the kilowatts, which is six times the rate, which in our case is 16 cents. So we're coming up with 96 cents to run that heater for four hours. So that means over the course of about a month of 30 days, it's gonna cost you a little less than $30 for the month to run an electric space heater for four hours a day. But what does that really boil down to? So we threw some numbers at you, let's look at it in practical application. So we put together a chart of our heaters. These are the exact heaters that we have that we use for room heating. So the first one, of course, is the tall ceramic heater. On low setting, it uses 780 watts. Mm -hmm. And on high, it actually uses 1,355 watts. And the reason why we know that is because we ran it through the kilowatt meter. We've mentioned this before. It's a very handy device. It will help you really narrow down exactly what your usage is on every item that you have in your house that you plug in. You simply plug this into the wall, plug your device in here, press the watt button, mm -hmm. and it displays how many watts that it's using. The next heater that we have, it is a parabolic dish heater. And these are very efficient heaters. In mm -hmm. fact, we had one that was dated clear back to about 1910. These, are, these were some of the first- They've been around a long time. Yeah, yeah, these were some of the first kinds of space heaters they ever used. What it does is it directs heat right at you. It's not mm -hmm. a real wide heat. It's not, it's not a general heat. There's no fan to blow it. It's mm -hmm. a radiant heat and they, they do work quite well. This one on low is 360 watts and on high is 750 watts. So you can see it's about half of what that tall ceramic heater uses. And it also has the ability to rotate, it oscillates, mm -hmm. so it can distribute the heat between two people. We like using this one. Now we also have a short ceramic heater. The advantage of the short ceramic heater, it does not rotate. The tall one we showed you, it actually does. Here, I'll hold this a sec. You can, pull, you can hold up the, the tall one. So this one, no rotating. This tall one, it actually rotates back and forth. So this is much better if you're gonna heat like a small room or something like that. More people sitting in the room, you're gonna want something that is going to rotate. This is fantastic if you need like something that's just going to sit under your desk. It's nice and short, goes right underneath of a desk and it will keep your feet and your legs warm when you're working at a desk. So many people working from home right now and this would be super handy. But here's something you need to know about this. Yep. This actually uses more power than that tall ceramic heater uses. So it's using, it's using about 840 watts on low and 1380 on high. So even though it's smaller, right. doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna use less power. Yeah, so don't make that assumption. So I did a real quick chart for you to show, to show you the difference between the ceramic heaters and the other kind of heater. So you can sort of determine which one's gonna be right for you and how much energy each of them uses. 
So what you're looking at here is a chart that just indicates the two different types of heaters that we have and what it costs to run each type of heater. So you can see that the ceramic heater on low daily, it's gonna use about 54 cents, monthly about 16.20. On high, it's gonna use about $26.40. The parabolic heater monthly on low is only gonna use $6.90. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less. Huge difference. And on high uh, in a month, it's only I'm going to use about 14 and 40 cents, $14 and 40 cents. And that is based on our rates. So you'll have to refigure this for your heaters and your utility company, what it charges per kilowatt hour. So what does this all boil down to? Are you going to save money? Or are you not going to save money? Well, the possibility exists that you could save money. It's finding that combination of running that heater on high heat versus low heat and the number of hours per day that you're willing to run that heater, how many heaters you are running throughout the house and how much it's costing you per kilowatt hour. And finally, of course, how much energy your heater actually uses on the low setting and how much it uses on the high setting. But find that magic combination that works for you in order to keep warm and toasty and still save money. Now, as you might imagine, we really centered this video on how to keep your body warm in your home when you are lowering your thermostat. But there's actually a whole lot of other things that you can do in addition to lowering your thermostat. They're going to help you keep that utility bill under control this winter. We did a video on it and we gave you 25 ways that you can lower your winter utility cost. That video, if you haven't watched it, is right over there and you might find it super helpful.